Well, it's just the way Satin would like it. It's going to be cold over the next couple days. With lows in the mid-20s by the time we get to tomorrow. A full look at that chilly Viper 6 forecast straight ahead. Right now on News Channel 6 at 7, the family of a missing woman for more than a week is pleading for answers. We'll hear from them. Plus, people living on the South Carolina coast are cleaning up after severe storms pounded that area yesterday. We'll show you that mess. And thousands of poor Eisenhower soldiers heading home for the holidays. A look inside that massive operation. Your News at 7 starts right now. Live from Television Park. This is WJBF News Channel 6 at 7. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Hannah Latier. Coverage you can count on begins with a family looking for more help in the search for a missing Aiken County mother. 30-year-old Jamila Smith called 911 when her ex-boyfriend showed up to her home December 2nd and has not been seen or heard from since that day. Renata DeBose has more from her family. We offered a $10,000 reward that anybody know any type of information to call in and let somebody know something. It's been more than two weeks and now an increase in reward money for the location of Jamila Smith, known as Millie, to loved ones. Monday, the 30-year-old mother's family and missing persons organization Broken Link Foundation sent a message to Aiken County Sheriff's Office. At this time, the family is requesting that SLED take over Jamila's investigation, removing Aiken County Sheriff's Office entirely from the investigation. We are also asking that the FBI step in and assist. Smith, who has two young children, last spoke to her mother around 7 o'clock Saturday, December 2nd. That same night, she called 911 to report her ex-boyfriend. 34-year-old Daniel Harmon showed up at her home. She ran down the street to get away from him. While police arrested and charged Harmon a few days later in North Augusta with kidnapping and domestic violence, there have been no signs of Smith, and loved ones say they can't get any answers. Nothing has been said. Nothing has been done. Um, we've been, you know, left to do our own thing. The investigators are communicating with uh, key individuals of the family. Um, I believe Miss Smith's mother, father, um, a couple other relatives, the specifics, I don't know. Smith's family says the abuse can be dated back to August with email exchanges between investigators and Jamila. News Channel 6 obtained the 100-page incident reports that date back to the same time, all showing Harmon's early trouble with the law and the couple's violent relationship. The last deputy called to the couple's domestic dispute in November revealed the deputy believed Harmon choked and scratched her, noting dried blood on his nails. Daniel Harmon is an abuser. He has a rap sheet more than a mile long, but always seems to weasel his way back into population. We do know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jamila was screaming for help. The ones that she was supposed to be able to trust to help her and save her failed her. Loved ones want to search the areas between where Smith lived and where Harmon was arrested, along with properties they believed he owned in the CSRA. While Smith's children are with their grandmother, family members say she and Jamila's father are distraught, and they aren't sure they will make it without her as the holidays approach. Her mom told me, she says, I don't know if I'm going to survive this. Anyone with information should contact the Aiken County Sheriff's Office or the family's private investigator. There is a $10,000 reward. A Columbia County deputy now fired after being arrested over the weekend. David Brassel was arrested Sunday morning after an altercation with his wife at a Savannah hotel. The victim told police that the argument became physical and that Brassel pushed her against a wall. She also stated that she, he tried to hang up the phone when she called 911. He's charged with simple battery and interfering with phone calls. A Columbia County woman is charged with stealing money from Lights of the South. Carrie Rollins was employed at the... She was employed at the, at the business when a Columbia County deputy says he noticed she appeared to be pocketing money at the ticket booth. The owners then installed a camera in the booth and confronted her on December 13th. 
According to an incident report, she admitted to stealing a total of $2,500 on three different occasions. She's charged with felony theft by taking. Time now for our first check of our forecast with Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller. Tim, a very cold night in store. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, a very chilly day uh, as well. We have that from Christmas, and there's some changes for Christmas Day forecast. We'll dive into all of that in just a few minutes. Yeah. All right, Tim, thank you so much. Cleanup is underway on South Carolina's coast after strong storms rolled through there yesterday. The mayor of Isle of Palms says the most devastating part of the storm yesterday is that it reversed tons of work they had done to help with erosion. He says millions of dollars have gone to waste, especially on the breach inlet, as efforts to re-nourish that area are starting back at square one. Hopefully, uh, you know, what's happened is done and we can go about fixing things as fast as possible. We'll hopefully approve some additional beach re-nourishment tonight. Um, and, you know, we'll just move as fast as um, our, the agencies that we rely on will let us. Neighboring Sullivan's Island is also in recovery mode. Town leaders there are assessing the asphalt along the beaches to see if it needs repairs. Hundreds of Fort Eisenhower soldiers are heading home for the holidays. More than 4,500 soldiers from the post are on holiday leave. It started at midnight, and they'll head back to their missions on January 3rd. The Army is the only service that pauses during the holiday season. Some soldiers in basic training get a two-week break, and those we caught up with say they're looking forward to getting some much-needed R&R. Everybody's there. Everybody's in a, everyone's together. Everyone's sharing stories, um, gifts are being given, there's events going on. I've always been like a very um, family-oriented person, so it's just very important that we all get together and just, it's like, it's it's a very special moment just because it just doesn't happen a lot where everyone can come together and celebrate. The Army is expecting more than 38,000 soldiers from across the country will go home to spend the holidays with their families. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp is announcing more funding to keep students and teachers safe in schools, as well as retention bonuses for teachers and state employees. Atlanta Bureau Chief Archit Sasadri has more. There's some good news for Georgians. Governor Kemp announcing two economic investments, the first one impacting all state employees as well as Georgia educators. They'll get a $1,000 retention pay supplement before the end of the year on their last December paycheck. I think this helps. Um, like you said, we, we've got a huge issue with that. Our turnover statewide is around 24%, and that's been a a concern of mine since I've been in this role. Of course, it was a concern before that, but definitely since I've been in this role. And I think this this is a step in the right direction. I think you're going to see other things done that, that we will continue to do that. The other one, going to all Georgia public schools. The governor announcing a $45,000 grant for school safety, where schools can use this money for whatever they'd like, including improving infrastructure or hiring personnel, things like hiring a school safety officer. It's a $45,000 grant, as, as he said several, as the governor said several times, is going to be in the budget, and it's, it's going to be a line item that'll be there. So schools can depend on that money to be there every year so they can hire staff if they want. They can um, make improvements in the facilities, you know, whatever they choose to do. There may be some schools that they could better spend their money on something besides personnel. You know, it may be hardening the school, it may be cameras, it may be some sort of system or or what have you. Uh, so we're trusting the schools to do that. Now, all of this is in addition to the $2,000 pay increase that teachers would get. Governor Brian Kemp says this would make Georgia teachers one of the highest paid in the Southeast. State lawmakers will gather here inside the state capitol in just three weeks to ratify a state budget. They'll have 40 legislative days to do so, and they'll prioritize health care, education, as well as public safety. Reporting at the Georgia State Capitol, Archit Sashadri. Atlanta Bureau Chief. The retention bonus will cost a total of $330 million. The school safety bill will run more than $100 million. Both will be in the governor's proposed 2025 budget. Still ahead on News Channel 6 at... If you're looking for the newest Apple Watch for a gift, you might want to hurry up and get it. The
newest smartwatches, the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Apple Watch Ultra 2. The blood oxygen sensor on those devices is part of a patent dispute. In October, the Federal Trade Agency found that Apple violated the patent of the company Massimo. The Biden administration has until Christmas Day to review the ruling, but Apple is stopping its sales in the U.S. regardless. Both watches are still available outside the United States. Don't go away. Chief Meteorologist Tim Miller has your full forecast next. I'm Mike Costello. With uh, 50s, low 50s, and notice we won't get anywhere near normal until Saturday, high of 62. The same thing for Christmas Eve before we cool off again. Christmas Day with that chance of some showers. That's your forecast. All right, Tim, thank you so much. Still ahead on News Channel 6 at 7, three moms sharing a very rare condition during pregnancy. Now they're bonding and they've become friends. Their story when we come back. Your job. Count all today for that free in-home estimate. I'm Richmond County Sheriff Richard Roundtree. Theft from cars don't always involve breaking into your vehicle. Do not make it easy for a thief to steal your weapon or other valuables from your vehicle. Please, lock your doors and do not store weapons in unintended vehicles. The News Channel 6 mobile app. The WGBF Live Viper 6 Skyview Network is sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Low prices, big selection, and committed to quality customer service. Three moms are building a one-of-a-kind friendship, all experiencing a rare condition while carrying twins. Eva Pilgrim has the story on how the trio supported and helped one another through their journeys. It was really hard to kind of swallow the fact that, you know, this is not going to be anything what I imagined it to be. For Summer Morrison, the summer of 2022 was a scary time. She was admitted to a high-risk maternity unit with an incredibly rare twin pregnancy. Monoamniotic twins, where identical twins share the same amniotic sac. Just a few weeks into her stay, Kiara Davis was admitted with the same condition. I tried to give her, you know, some of the things I wish I knew when I got there. That was really helpful because I was like, ooh, uh, this is finally somebody that's going through the same thing I'm going through. Monoamniotic twins occur in less than 0.1% of all pregnancies. Both Summer and Kiara were second-time moms, but were not prepared for the intricacies of such a high-risk pregnancy involving hospitalization at 26 weeks and constant monitoring of the twins. Just knowing, like, we weren't doing this alone and that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. Summer gave birth to her healthy twin girls on July 20th, 2022. And just a few days later, Kiara received a knock at her door from Vakoya Miller, who had just been admitted with the same condition. All three women receiving their care from Atrium Health. I asked her a million questions, like, how has it been so far? Please give me, like all of your advice on staying sane. So I was like, you can sit on the bed if you want to. You can get comfortable. We can just talk about it and express ourselves to each other. Here, giving birth to two healthy girls on August 19th, 2022, and Vakoya on September 28th. All six babies now thriving. Getting to know that there are two other moms that were in the hospital around the same time as me. And even when I got to the hospital, Summer had already delivered. And it just made me grateful for the advice that both of you gave me everything's gonna be okay we're gonna get through this it's just like a bond you can't make up it's just just awesome after the break we take a final look at your nightly forecast stay with us ho 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 we can do it all one scout troop in the chicago area now boasts six new eagle scouts all six inducted over the weekend, it's rare because only 1-2% to 2 of scouts ever achieve the rank of Eagle. Most of these Eagle Scouts started together in scouting as Tiger Scouts when they were in elementary school. Congratulations to them. Tim, were you ever in the Boy Scouts room? No, I wasn't, but I wanted to be, but I was hung out at the you know, local TV or radio station. <laughs> I wasn't a Girl Scout either, yeah, so. Yeah, did the weather. Uh, I tell you what, we need a Boy Scout to get a campfire going here, because it is, it's chilly outside. 26, or Girl Scouts, right? Mm -hmm. right. Boy Scout, right? Inclusivity. That. That's right. Uh, 49 the high tomorrow. That's all we're going to do. 50s for Wednesday, and we'll finally warm it up as we get in towards uh, the weekend, but we'll bring in a chance of rain for Christmas Eve. 
Well, I'm looking forward to those warmer temperatures. Thank you, Tim. That's all the time we have. Our next newscast is at 10 on Me TV, but you can always find us in updates on WJBF.com. Entertainment Tonight is next.